The film takes place in the fictional town of Rezembul, where people practice alchemy, a rare form of art. This art enables the transformation of common metals like iron and cobalt into valuable ones like gold. Additionally, there are those who employ this art for transmutation or the resurrecting of deceased individuals. However, it is completely unsafe, according to rumors, the procedure's failure would have serious repercussions. The Elric brothers are shown to us in the first scene, Alphonse and Edward, who have been self-taught in alchemy since they were young. For the majority of their experiments, they make use of books from their library. They make a toy one day and happily show their mother, who gives them a warm hug and congratulates them. However, she suffers a sudden cardiac arrest shortly after they leave to play. Since there is no longer anyone to care for the boys, their days begin to become increasingly desperate. Edward comes up with an idea because he doesn't want to give up on their mother. He mentions that they can practice transmutation on their deceased mother and bring her back using the alchemy book. Alphonse thinks it's a bad idea because he's heard about the scary consequences, but when Edward tells him there's nothing to worry about, he agrees to help. The two brothers begin their preparations in the following scene. In accordance with the book, they gather all of the ingredients and position them in the center of the transmutation circle. When they start reciting the custom, a perilously enormous sum of energy begins conforming to the house, which in the end transforms into a vortex. It is too late for the brothers to realize that their experiment has failed at this point. In the end, the vortex tore down their house and destroyed everything in its path. The movie then jumps 20 years forward. Edward, now an adult, is pursuing a priest who is armed with a sinister red stone. The magical rock's ability to perform alchemy without the use of any ingredients is made clear. As a result, when Edward is cornered, the priest uses the stone to set off stone pillars, forcing Edward to flee. Edward also conjures up his magic spear and reveals that he has become an expert alchemist when he summons several terrifying creatures from the underworld. At that very instant, a massive armored figure appears and begins to slaughter the monsters one at a time. He uses his enormous strength to throw them around like ragdolls, but his helmet gets knocked off in the process. His body is completely hollow from the inside, and the armor has no head, which is surprising. In the meantime, Edward kills the remaining monsters and admits that he also has prosthetic limbs. He then says that everyone calls him the full metal alchemist because of this body trait. From there, the terrified priest tries to flee, but Edward eventually follows him. The priest's redstone is knocked off when he strikes the priest with his prosthetic arm. The military, led by Colonel Mustang, arrives just as it appears that he has completed his mission and captures both of them. Edward begs for the philosopher's stone rock, but Colonel Mustang quickly demonstrates that it is fake. Edward is devastated by this because he has been looking for the real one for a long time. While this is happening, the armor also shows that he is Edward's younger brother, Alphonse. He tries to console Edward, but the priest manages to escape because of the distraction. After that, everyone travels to the military base, where Colonel Mustang argues that there is no such thing as a philosopher's stone. The one they had previously encountered was merely an amplifier with no transmutation capabilities. Edward maintains, however, a hope that the genuine stone can be found somewhere. He is frantically looking for it so that he can regenerate not only his brother but also the limbs he has lost. Edward meets his childhood best friend as he gets ready to go home after the meeting, Winry. She says that she found out about him from the news, and now she wants to help him find the philosopher's stone. In another location, the priest enters a pitch-black room where three magical gangsters are waiting for him. Supervised by the fearsome leader, Lust includes two additional members, Gluttony, a fat person who can eat anything, and Envy, a tall person who can change into anyone. It turns out that the priest was sent on an assignment, but because he failed to complete it, Lust is furious. She then brutally impales him with her claws as a punishment. Gluttony swoops in after the priest has died and eats him. Edward, on the other hand, tries to get some sleep but keeps having visions of the incident that happened 20 years ago. Edward is brought to the Gate of Truth, where all of the universe's knowledge is contained, immediately following the unsuccessful transmutation process. The gate then suddenly opens, and some repulsive tentacles pull him inside. When Edward is sent through the universe, he sees his mother in the distance at one point. He desperately tries to reach out to her, but he is immediately taken outside the gate once more. However, Edward now knows a lot about alchemy and how to use it without reading books. A transparent deity appears at that moment and proclaims his identity as God. He says that a deal will have to be made if anyone wants to bring their deceased loved ones back to life. He says this and takes one of Edward's limbs away from him because Edward had been trying to get his mother back. Edward wakes up later in his house, 
which is found to be intact. However, his brother as well as his limb are missing, Alphonse has vanished from sight, he realizes as a result that even Alphone made a self-sacrificing sacrifice for the alchemy. The monstrosity of a human that Edward sees as he approaches the location where they had carried out the experiment does not even remotely resemble their mother. In an act of rage, he destroys an armor set and begins transforming in an effort to reclaim his brother. He is once more taken outside the gate of truth, where the deity is waiting for him, and the plan works. However, he must once more sacrifice one of his limbs because he has requested his brother's life. He wakes up in his bed with two of his limbs missing after this. His sibling, Alphonse has also been given a new lease on life, but only as an armor. In the present, Colonel Mustang takes Winry, the brothers, and an experienced alchemist by the name of Tucker in the hope that he can tell them something about the Philosopher's Stone. Tucker shows them his inventions when they get to his house. By combining various animals, he has produced some hybrid organisms. He then reveals that he used to be a well-known state alchemist who worked for the government. However, all of his experiments were deemed pointless, and he was fired. In order to be reinstated to his position, he is now making every effort to invent new products. In the following scene, Edward and Tucker have a private meeting where Edward tells the whole story and why he wants the precious stone. Although he doesn't know where it is exactly, Tucker promises to assist in its recovery. After that, Edward and Winry get on a train to a different city. They are trying to meet Dr. Marco, a different scientist who seems to be familiar with the Philosopher's Stone. Unfortunately, Marco mistakenly believes them to be criminals and points a gun at them during their first meeting. Edward tries to calm him down as a response, but he ultimately knocks him out. Marco refuses to discuss the Philosopher's Stone when he regains consciousness, claiming that it is for their own benefit. He then fires at the window when he detects something wrong. It turns out that the dangerous woman, Lust had been watching them all along. Despite being shot multiple times in the chest, she continues to slowly approach the trio. She finally uses her extended claws to bind everyone to the wall before fatally stabbing Marco. Using his last breaths, Marco informs Edward that Laboratory 5 contains the truth about the stone's origins. It would appear that the military is making use of this secret building. Edward tries to learn more, but Marco dies tragically. Edward rushes back to Tucker's mansion after the incident, where he discovers that Tucker has created a one-of-a-kind creature that looks like a cross between a dog and a human. Then, Tucker reveals that his experiment actually necessitated the death of his daughter and pet dog. Additionally, the previous creature was constructed from the remains of his wife. Edward becomes enraged upon hearing this and begins slapping Tucker. Alphonse arrives just in time to stop the mad scientist, and he almost kills the scientist. Edward begins perusing a number of books following Tucker's capture in the hope of discovering information about Laboratory 5. But even after weeks of research, he still doesn't have a clue. However, the military general arrives at the library one evening while he is still there and explains that Laboratory 5 is actually the name given to the closed military cannery. Edward immediately summons his team and rushes there upon hearing this. In the meantime, a senior military captain conducts additional research on Laboratory 5, discovering that it is, in fact, a substantial transmutation circle. It would appear that something is being produced there. He tries to let his superiors know about it, but lust prevents him from doing so. Envy transforms into Colonel Mustang and kills the captain as he rushes out of the house and into a payphone to call his general. The strategy is to implicate the colonel and imprison him for a long time. Sadly, the strategy works, as a few bystanders witness the incident and report it to the authorities right away. In another location, the mad scientist, Tucker also makes it out of the prison. The military apprehend Edward and his friends in the following scene on the grounds that they are associated with the murderer Mustang. They are then locked in a room, but Edward quickly frees his group and helps them escape using his quick thinking. After that, they steal a car and drive to Laboratory 5, where Colonel Mustang and another lieutenant are at odds. He snaps his fingers and sets the lieutenant on fire, surprising everyone. The burning lieutenant suddenly changes, appearing just as Colonel Mustang appears to be insane. It turns out to be disguised envy. As soon as the remaining criminals arrive, Lust stabs Colonel Mustang in the abdomen, severely injuring him. Edward follows her closely as she flees the scene. A large transmutation circle is drawn in an abandoned room when Edward arrives shortly after. Before he could get a handle on the circumstance, the insane lab rat, Tucker appears. He reveals this by pulling a philosopher's stone out of his pocket and explaining that these things are actually manufactured in large quantities within this facility. In point of fact, the operation is being carried out by the military. Exhaust then, 
at that point, uncovers that to bring back somebody from the dead, a penance is mandatory. Consequently, high-ranking military personnel were bringing loved ones back at the expense of prisoners. Edward is surprised and disgusted when he hears this, but before he can find out more, Lust enters the room and kills Tucker for sharing too much information. We learn in this section that Lust is an alchemically created homunculus, a rare but powerful species. The general, who is the mastermind behind everything, also arrives at that exact moment. He explains that Lust is one of his best warriors and that he did all of this to build an army of supernatural beings. After that, he turns on the power in the room, bringing out thousands of dead creatures trapped in their pods. The general then injects the philosopher's stone into a large tank cylinder, and as the solution enters the creature's bodies, each one begins to come to life. The general goes to greet his babies because he is happy to see them finally take their first steps. However, to his dismay, they immediately seize him and begin to tear him apart. The colonel, Alphonse, Winry, and other generals arrive at the room at the same time, joining Edward in the fight against the monsters. They appear to be doomed at first because they are easily outnumbered, but Colonel Mustang determines that striking the creatures in the head is the only way to end them. The group eventually starts killing people using this strategy. However, Edward and his team are compelled to leave because the creatures keep coming. The battle continues there as Lust and her gang arrive as well. Envy is burned to death and Colonel Mustang, who is still recovering from the earlier injury, manages to summon all of his strength to unleash a deadly flame. The colonel then turns his attention to Lust, but his attacks are pointless. Even after receiving a serious chest impalement, she continues to regenerate. Lust reveals that she has a philosopher's stone embedded in her chest, surprising Edward and the colonel. She possesses extraordinary strength and healing abilities as a result. She reveals exactly what she shouldn't have, which is unfortunate for her. She is attacked repeatedly by Edward, Alphonse, and the colonel. When she is distracted, the colonel removes the stone from her chest, resulting in her immediate death. Gluttony, on the other hand, stands back and watches everything happen. He leaves the location quietly, unwilling to put his own life in danger, after realizing that his companions have been killed. Colonel Mustang promises Edward that he can use the Philosopher's Stone to bring his brother back after the battle is finally won. The latter does so, begins his alchemy, and is immediately taken to the Gate of Truth. His sibling, Alphonse, in his true human form, is also present. Now, Edward only needs to give the deity the stone in return for his brother. He backs out, however, at the last minute. Edward has seen how the evil stone can kill people, so he no longer wants to use it for himself. In the final scene, Edward goes back to the real world and tells his brother that he didn't bring his body back. Alphonse immediately forgives him, stating that he also does not want to use alchemy, surprising him. He argues that since the illegal method put them in this predicament in the first place, it is best to never use the stone. The movie comes to a close with the two brothers Winry and the Colonel looking happy at the sun because it has reduced Earth. Thanks for watching my videos, please hit that like button and do not forget to subscribe to my channel.